Today I'm going to talk to you about some ongoing work with my colleague Dale Casamata at UNF on the diversity of microbes in, low, in a low oxygen sinkhole. The evolution of complex life on Earth would not have been possible without the evolution of oxygen-producing photosynthesis by cyanobacteria, a group of bacteria. Cyanobacteria transformed Earth's atmosphere over two and a half billion years ago from one of very low oxygen to modern oxygen levels. This was most likely not a simple process and required a complex interplay between the microbial metabolism and geochemistry. To better understand this transition in Earth's history, it's beneficial to study modern ecosystems that may serve as an analogy to these ancient systems. In 2002, the submerged 20 meter deep Middle Island sinkhole was discovered in Lake Huron near Alpena, Michigan here. This sinkhole is fed by groundwater with no oxygen, high levels of sulfate, low pH, high conductivity, and constant temperature. These conditions are common to the Proterozoic, the eon in which oxygen-rich atmosphere evolved. This unique environment, which mimics the conditions of the oxygen transition period of Earth's history, has been colonized by primary producers, including cyanobacteria and diatoms, a group of eukaryotic algae with glass cell walls. In addition to the sinkhole, a fountain in the Alpena area outside of their library was discovered to have the same groundwater source that was compositionally similar to that of the sinkhole. Previous studies of both of these sites, the Middle Sinkhole and the Alpena Library Fountain, have focused on analyzing these MAC communities using eDNA techniques that focus on characterizing diversity in large functional categories that can miss the finer scale evolutionary diversity present. So no previous studies to date have cultured and characterized the species that live in this MAC community. Therefore, the goal of our project is to collect intact mats from these two sites and characterize the diversity of the primary producers from this unique habitat with simi similar biogeochemical signatures to early Earth. To these ends, in June 2019, we collected intact mats from two sites in the sinkhole and the library fountain. And these are some pictures of the sinkhole mats and our dive team from NOAA collecting them and characterized the diversity of the primary producers. And then we also collected mats in September of 2019, but just from the fountain. So the mats were brought back into the lab and individual diatom and cyanobacteria strains were isolated from the mats and cultured. Resulting strains are to be characterized using both light microscopy and also molecular techniques. So for our preliminary results, to date we have isolated around 20 strains of cyanobacteria and you can see images of some of these strains here. So leptolingvia, some formidium, and two others, as well as around five strains of diatoms. An example here is the Criticula cuspidata. And these have only been characterized so far using light microscopy, but these genera are known to harbor extensive cryptic diversity that can only be uncovered using molecular tools. Therefore, our next step is to sequence the 16S and 16S ITS regions from all of the cyanobacteria strains that we've isolated and the RBCL region from the diatom strains that we've isolated. And these data will allow us to further characterize what are most likely new species to science that live in this incredible habitat that is similar to early Earth. In closing, I would like to thank my funding sources, the MSGC folks that funded this research project, and some lab and field help at Grand Valley State University, the dive team that helped collect the mats at the sinkhole that are NOAA divers, and then the NOAA Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary that provided ship, lab, and dorm facilities, and the Alpena Library for allowing us to collect at their fountain site. And thank you so much for listening.